Hi, I'm Chris Cummings from Falcon Store, and thank you for joining us for today's upgrade webcast on moving to the latest from Falcon Store. We're going to focus first on Store Site, which is our new unified user experience. And then we're going to talk about the move from VTL to Store Safe and from CDP and NSS to Store Guard to get you fully up to date and on the latest uh, from Falcon Store to take advantage of our new innovations that we are bringing to the table. I'm joined today by Mark Delsman, who heads pr product for Falcon Store, and hey, by Abdul Hashmi, who heads up uh, professional services and customer success for Falcon Store. Abdul, welcome. Hi, hey, Chris. So these are the guys who are innovating on the product uh, in behind the scenes, and the guy who is out probably among our largest customers every day of the week. So you're going to get the straight scoop on what's new, why we've been building what we're doing, and uh, how customers are getting out value out of it. So um, I'm looking forward to a great session today. So just one quick update on Falcon Store, the company. Uh, we are absolutely focused on modernizing backup and data protection for the multi-cloud world. Uh, as you know, our customers know, uh, we are 100% focused on software and working with the, uh, the hardware uh, selections that you've made, whether that's the servers, the SAN storage, the object storage that you have and are using, and also bring you to the cloud and bring cloud capabilities into your solution environment. This has been the focus for the company uh, over the last several years, and as a consequence, we have well over an exabyte of data under management across a thousand customers and four continents. So we continue to move forward. We're adding new technology partners as we go. Most recently, we've been working with Veeam to add the ability to support Veeam environments and bring our you know, industry leading deduplication capabilities to Veeam environments. Uh, adding, as I mentioned, new options in the cloud world. So specifically for on-premise, as well as in the public cloud, such as Azure, IBM, AWS, Wasabi. And uh, for those that may have missed it, last week we reported our first quarter uh, numbers, achieving 100% growth in product revenue and 200% growth in new customer revenue. So we're continuing to push forward. But the reason why we're spending today's session on uh, upgrading to the latest is so that you the current user population for these products can get the most value out of what you've already purchased with us and are working with and get the most value out of it and, and apply it for the projects which you know that we know you have underway. So without further ado, we're gonna move directly to talking about StoreSite. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mark to lead uh, through the product pieces and Abdul is gonna be continuing to be part of this discussion to bring news from the uh, on-premise environment, right? Because you're dealing with these customers every day. Okay, thank you, Chris. So uh, we're gonna start off with a slide here that uh, puts the products into a little bit of per perspective. Uh, Chris mentioned that uh, some of the names have, have changed. Uh, so I thought this would be a good place to start. Storesite is our new uh, user experience, uh, the user interface, and we'll get into some of the details about what that uh, brings to the market. But to start with, it is one one screen, one user interface that can uh, uh, manage all of your instances, whether they're store safe or store guard across your enterprise. Uh, so just a single management console and a single uh, licensing uh, console for everything. StoreSafe uh, is our next generation of VTL, and we'll go into some details about what's new and different there. And then StoreGuard. Uh, we've used a number of different names in the past from CDP and NSS and FDMP. Uh, all of the names are, are joining this store family, uh, if you will. So Store StoreGuard is being renamed or excuse me, NSS, CDP are being renamed as StoreGuard, an all-in-one product. 
So let's start off with Storesight. Storesight, as I mentioned, delivers the user experience, a single uh, management interface for any of the instances of Falcon Store products across your enterprise. It is also the license manager, so a single uh, license uh, now for the entire uh, Falcon Store product family, uh, and it's measured on capacity under management. So you don't need to manage licenses on uh, a number of different servers as we've had in the past. Uh, we, we hope and expect this will be easier to manage uh, the licenses, but also since it's a single license based on capacity, if you want to mix the use of StoreGuard with StoreSafe, uh, once again, it's a single license uh, and, uh, and it should be very easy for you to try uh, maybe one of the other products if you have not in the past. Uh, th this also includes all the future uh, software updates and includes, of course, worldwide support along with it for your enterprise. So let's dig in and talk about uh, upgrading to StoreSafe. So this would be if you've been a, a VTL customer in the past, uh, we want to show you the new features and how to get that uh, upgrade. So uh, a typical VTL customer in the past probably had a setup somewhere like something like this, where they had a, a number of uh, backup servers, uh, that were backing up a number of different application servers and uh, loading that into the VTL where we would do the global deduplication and treat it as basically a virtual tape library. Uh, a number of our customers would replicate that VTL to another uh, VTL, probably offsite uh, or in the cloud. Uh, and that, so the the single instance repository uh, that we store all of your backup data on in the deduplicated form would be across two different sites. Uh, also, some of our customers uh, use our feature to output from VTL to physical tapes um, and drive it to the uh, storage facility. Uh, and over, depending on what your retention policy is, uh, these can add up over time. Uh, if you save your weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, um, you have that truck driving back and forth a lot. Um, so we'd like to show you some of the improvements we have to consider a different way of doing that uh, with our StoreSafe product. Our data de deduplication technology is one of the uh, core um, IP that we have here at Falcon Store. We've got a number of patents uh, covering this, and we believe it can provide you with the with the most dense uh, consolidated version of your data for the lowest storage cost. Uh, we remove duplicate blocks from uh, a single server, and since we are doing a global deduplication, uh, it also deduplicates across uh, all your ver servers. So. This, if you think about uh, this example here that is being shown about the number of different backup sets over time, uh, as, as probably not a lot of your data changes between backups, that means we can eliminate uh, a lot of the content that we've seen before and keep it in, as I said, a very uh, consolidated, very dense uh, format for the lowest cost. Uh, when we export to physical tapes, uh, generally it's not deduplicated, it's, it's restored out because that tape has to uh, exist as a standalone uh, uh, to be restored uh, in the future. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, the new items in StoreSafe and what you can expect from it. Uh, first off, you can tell that the uh, picture is pretty much the same as what we had it for VTL, but we have a couple of gold uh, uh, emblems here that talk about uh, some of the changes we've made. The first one, which is in the middle of the right-hand column, is we now support uh, exporting from StoreSafe to a cloud object storage account, and you can export these secure data containers that have deduplicated data in them. So instead of doing the 
bottom box, which is uh, writing to physical tape to take off site, you can now automatically export the data in a very condensed format in this deduplicated format into a secure data container and send it off site. So instead of um, uh, perhaps during the pandemic, uh, it might have been an issue to have people in the data center handling physical tapes or getting people to pick up uh, the tapes for taking off site to storage. Now you could do all of that from your store site console and setting up policies for how you want your data to be handled. Uh, so as we put it in the box here, this is tape-free, touch-free, fully automated way of making sure you have an offsite copy of all your data. We also support object storage uh, locally here for um, your single instance repository. If you want to leverage uh, that instead of what we would expect to be the more expensive SAN storage uh, for your repository. Let me bring in Abdul for a minute. Abdul, um, uh, what is the feedback that you've been seeing from customers uh, on the addition of cloud object storage? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, and that that uh, slide explains it, right? Uh, we have been talking to some of our top customers uh, who run uh, into a situation where with the excess of data, there's always a limit when it's on sand storage um, as to how much you can grow your repository. So giving our customers the ability to containerize in a do-do format out to achieve our object storage uh, is, is the key for our customers. And, and they have been really liking that, uh, that uh, functionality, right? Because uh, the alternative is linear uh, expansion of your entire environment. So another cluster, another, and then you got silos. With this one, all your data is still managed by the same uh, store safe cluster. Not a forklift uh, upgrade. Uh, you get to use the functionality as you are today, but in addition, you get all these uh, uh, future uh, innovations uh, within store safe. Great, thanks. And, and one thing I'd point out on the exporting to cloud object storage, uh, we support either moving the data or copying the data. So if you want it truly as just a second copy off site, then you could set up your policy to just copy it uh, to the uh, object storage account. But if, if after a certain period of time, uh, you don't want to keep it any longer in your uh, local repository, at that point, you could move it or export it out. Uh, in that case, uh, as Abdul was saying, your, your SAN storage doesn't fill up. Uh, we're acting much more of a, a, call it a gateway model in that case, uh, versus the what the VTL did in the past. So if you're experiencing a lot of uh, problems filling up SAN storage, this would be a very uh, interesting uh, new feature for you. Let's talk to just a very good point. Just, I'm sorry, just one point on that, Mark, is that some of our customers that we work on, because they just want to get their feet wet, they're actually using uh, the copy option. And once they feel comfortable, then they move on to the move option where they empty out the repository. So a great uh, point and uh, ability for our customers to play with the, with the feature. Great. Great. Let's talk a little bit about what the secure data container uh, is and uh, the security around them. Uh, so we take basically a virtual tape uh, image uh, that that we have ingested into StoreSafe and deduplicate that, and then we can put that into this secure data container uh, to send it to uh, your object storage account. It is in a deduplicated format, so it should be uh, uh, very dense, very compact uh, compared to the original tape. We also embed checksums uh, into the container. So in the future, you have the ability to set up a policy to check your uh, containers in the cloud at, at any certain interval that you want to set up. Maybe once a quarter, you want to, us to go out and validate all the checksums against the original one that's in the container. And we, we have the ability to do that. We'll report back that all are good or, if, or give you an alert if something was found to have a problem. Also, everything that we put into these containers to send off to the cloud uh, are all encrypted with AES-256 encryption. Uh, so you can count on them being very secure. 
and uh, and we've really tried to architect this to be uh, a long-term, very secure, very easy to use uh, archive for your data. So uh, if you're an existing VTL customer, I expect you, you know how easy it is to scale our product um, from the amount of ingest uh, that we can take. In this case, you can see if you fully load it up, up to 160 terabytes an hour of ingest, but also uh, as your needs grow, as your performance requirements grow, you can, you can add more uh, servers in, you could add more uh, high availability pairs uh, to this. We can get up to nine servers uh, with the same software that you can do, um, that you can use with, within just a single VM. So enormous scalability here. Um, and with the addition of uh, the cloud storage on the back end, almost infinite storage uh, capabilities. So uh, you can see uh, the flexibility of the software, uh, similar to the way the VTL was, but the addition, once again, of the cloud uh, storage. Abdul, let me ask, uh, what have you seen from our customers scaling uh, our systems over time? Yeah, um, like, like you mentioned, uh, we offer um, flexible scalability to our customers. Uh, this becomes really an issue with our enterprise customers where they have multiple data centers. In one particular instance, uh, in order for them to, to do the expansion with VTL, they would have to, not only the license and everything being uh, silos, they would have to go with 52 servers. Uh, but doing the same exact expansion with StoreSafe, uh, you only need 14 servers for the two data centers that they had. It that's a full blow and four VTL and and uh, um, the SIR servers on the on the front end. And that is the beauty of having the ability to empty out your repository by uh, containerizing and sending it out to object storage. So you never have to spend on storage compute or anything like that. Just just keep giving us object storage. That that's a, a great example of the hardware savings. Uh, that you can get from the previous version or VTL to the the next generation store safe. Uh, good example. So uh, a little bit about Storesight. Uh, we feel Storesight adds uh, a lot of management simplicity and power uh, for store safe. As I've mentioned earlier, it's the central console for for all your Falcon store. Um, instances, whether they're uh, local, whether they're in the cloud, whether they're at different data centers, one consolidated view of all your resources. Uh, it not only manages uh, StoreSafe, but also StoreGuard. We'll get more into StoreGuard uh, in a little bit here. Uh, it also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is based on total capacity used. So it's a single license, no matter what your mix of StoreSafe, StoreGuard, uh, whatever. It's it's a very easy metric uh, for you to manage. That also gives you the opportunity to try out the other products, if you wish, uh, for no additional cost. Um, it gives you not only the management of the license, but real-time visibility into uh, status, health, integrity of your system. Uh, and StoreSight can run in a VM, it can run on the StoreSafe hardware, or can be on a standalone server, depending on your scale and your needs. Um, we have a number of smart rules or policies, as I like to call them, uh, that you can set up within the StoreSight management console, and uh, also the analytics uh, reports and predictive uh, forecasts. Uh, one that our customers seem to uh, really enjoy is a trend line on how much storage you're using and when you will run out based on, on your historical use. We've also uh, added into store site multi-tenancy so, and role-based administration. So as an example, if you're um, a service provider and you have a number of customers uh, that are using your your service, you can keep each one of them uh, very separate. Uh, this also uh, gives you the, the features and functionality of chargeback. Um, so if, if you are a service provider and you want to offer backup services, uh, I think you'll find 
that uh, we've got this well laid out to be able to manage your individual customers. So StoreSite gives you, as I said, visibility uh, no matter where it's at. We, we've just included one screenshot here to show uh, within the circle there, you could see that uh, we've got a number of virtual tapes out at AWS. Um, and you can see uh, two columns to the right of that. Uh, it shows that the checksum has been verified and everything's green. Uh, so just a real easy visual image of the, uh, of the health of your system here. So we believe StoreSight and store safe along with the uh, secure data containers gives you uh, 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 a total package for your security requirements. Uh, just to summarize the role-based access controls, the encryption in motion or at rest, uh, depending on what you have selected, secure multi-tenancy and immutable archives based on uh, not only the embedded hash, but uh, the support for worm tape uh, we allow for virtual tape shredding and no need to have external ports open in your firewalls. Abdul, let me have you uh, take us through this slide and show what some of the optimization in insights can tell. Sure, thanks, uh, Mark. Uh, so with any uh, IT business, uh, daily business operation, um, you, you will see, as we have seen it with our customers, that sporadically there's a need for optimization, and that may be dictated by the new software version, increased uh, IO load uh, um, or capacity or, or uh, load latency demands from a new database uh, application. So the reasons uh, uh, could be any. Uh, and what we do with our Falcon Store um, optimization insight is that we go and analyze because Falcon Store is in the middle of everything. Um, you know, we, we are interfacing with fiber channel, we're interfacing with storage, we're interfacing with clients and, and the hypervisors and everything. Uh, we get to get a glimpse of everything on how things are connected with us in order for, for us to um, uh, deliver um, optimized, uh, optimization in the environment. Uh, and what we do through this optimization service is we do a full site audit full audit of the entire environment, where, where it's network, where it's a fiber channel. Uh, and we provide that report uh, to, to our customers. Uh, and as you can see on your screen, um, this is a, a sample report that we provide OS, um, our software, you know, whether it's network, network related or fiber channel related. Of course, some of the things don't apply to us. Uh, you, the customer will work with a vendor, but giving them a glimpse of where we are and how we can tune that in. Um, uh, is 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 a key. So we work with our customers. If it's our uh, software related, we create generate tickets and we work on those to resolve those issues. But if it's hardware or fiber channel related, or network related or storage related, we kind of work with them and work with that third, uh, vendor also to make sure that we can resolve customers' issue to optimize the environment. So it's a fully fully involved uh, uh, service that we offer to our existing uh, install base. Uh, and uh, they, they seem to love it. We have a lot of um, demand for this and we've been working with a lot of customers on it. Great, thank you. Okay, let me flip this back over to Chris to take us through a summary and what next steps are. Great. Well, thanks again to Mark, to you and to Abdul for taking us through not only the product, but how customers are using it and this new optimization insights capability, which is designed to so that we can have a standardized way of working with every customer around uh, getting the most out of the system. So just to reiterate, you know, there are a number of key capabilities. We've maintained the capabilities that you've known and, and, and use extensively today, uh, but we've added a brand new user experience to make this even easier to manage all your sites, all your data across the various clouds that they, you may use in the future to deal with your license capabilities in a much more simplified way uh, and adding secure data containers for unlimited capacity and, and really being able to use to get to a new standard for your, uh, your, your offsite archive, which can be the cloud now, not just uh, tape the way we knew it before. 
Uh, and for those that are running larger environments, multi-tenancy, role-based access control, billback, and dashboards are essential because, you know, as Mark pointed out, MSPs are doing this with us today, but increasingly we're seeing large enterprises that are running backup as a service and they need a way to scale their operation. So now we're gonna cut from the presentation part of the discussion and we're gonna move directly to your questions. So uh, we've got a bunch of those in queue and we're looking forward to answering them all. All right, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. And uh, yeah, we do have a bunch of questions. So I'm gonna get started on those. Please keep those questions coming. So the first question is on this optimization insights piece, Abdul, that you were sharing. Is this is this a report or is this a service? How do I get access to it? Yeah, great, great uh, question. Uh, it is a service um, from for our customers. They can uh, simply get in touch with the account team uh, or this simply open a, a support ticket. So it's a service where some of our customers, they have it on a regular uh, basis. They have subscribed to this on a quarterly basis. Some customers, when they have um, something going on in their environment or changes uh, they're requested at that particular time. But the nature of the services, uh, as we covered, right, um, we basically evaluate the entire site from faculty store software perspective, um, take those data points and, and, and generate that report and provide it to the customers. Um, how to get it done? Like I said, just contact the account team or open, um, get in touch with our support team. Okay, gotcha. Okay, question on uh, store site, uh, Mark. Just uh, how do I move to store site, and what, what's the cost of of how how should how should customers think about the cost of this? Is this free? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, so uh, all of our software, whether it's store site, store guard, store safe, uh, we do not charge a fee for our software. We actually just charge the capacity uh, under management. So uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with StoreSite, there is a central point now for that capacity license. And uh, whether it's uh, local capacity or cloud capacity, uh, that's the one consolidation point and the one license as opposed to in the past where we had licenses on every one of our servers. So no, we don't charge for a, a fee for the software at all. It's just a, a capacity-based license. So the upgrade to move to uh, store site uh, should be a pretty easy step. Um, and the support team is happy to uh, walk you through that or help you make that transition uh, and eliminate all the extra licenses and consolidate on the single one. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And there's a follow on to that. Uh, Abdul, let's, let's throw this one to you, which is what's entailed in, in getting store site uh, installed and, and up and running? How, uh, how should people be thinking about that? Yeah, so it's different from the Java where you can install it on a workstation, obviously. So it needs, it, it has some work, uh, hardware requirements, uh, which are uh, uh, identified in our release notes and also in our certification metric. You do need a hardware or, or a hypervisor. It can run both as a VM or uh, on, a, on a x86 uh, a hardware. Um, if you're using, uh, if you have a, a, a BTL environment, or if you want to use it in a store store safe environment, you also have the ability to install it on the same hardware where your store safe is getting installed, which is what we call all-in-one configuration. So really straightforward. It's a brand new installation. Obviously, uh, there's no upgrade to store site uh, unless you're already using a free store or previous version of FMS. Um, but if you're using a Java, the store site will be a brand new installation um, in any of these uh, form factors, um, be it hardware, hypervisor, um, or uh, all-in-one in the store site configuration. Okay, got it. That's great. And then another question um, from from Graham. Thank you, Graham. Uh, is on does store safe support upstream multi-path from, from different backup clients. So Mark, let's push this to you. Um, uh, how do we accept, how do we accept data? From different backup clients, yes. We uh, have in our compatibility matrix on our website, uh, a full list of different backup software. We could uh, take streams from 
uh, virtually any software that's on the market, any backup software on the market. And yes, we not only uh, can take multi-stream, we would encourage that. That is a way that uh, we can take in uh, a bunch of different information and then our global dedupe uh, will deduplicate across all these different vendors. So as an example, if you have a Comval backup and and maybe you have an IBMI environment where BRMS is, is your backup software. We're actually deduplicating across these different environments for the highest efficiency. Right. Okay. So yes is the answer. And yeah. uh, then also uh, the next question is really on security. And it, the the focus is, you know, how do we, how does StoreSafe provide a secure uh, transfer of data to the cloud and what do we do about security uh, in the cloud if that's the destination? Great uh, question. Let's throw that to Mark. Great question. So uh, uh, a couple of different ways of doing this. Uh, so from a security perspective, uh, we can, um, it's, it's up to the user to choose, but we can encrypt each container with uh, AES-256 encryption for very strong uh, encryption set, the keys are kept local uh, on site in store safe, so the keys do not get transmitted out in the open at all. Uh, so you can fully encrypt your container. In addition to that, uh, I'd like to point out uh, the immutability uh, aspect of this also. So uh, you can set on each container, uh, just like you can on, on tapes or virtual tapes, uh, a worm lock, uh, so it cannot be modified. Uh, and you also have the option on your cloud account of setting yet another uh, uh, immutability uh, setting so that it can uh, either be retention hold or worm lock also. So there's multiple layers uh, to provide security here to make sure that uh, that your data is secure once it's put out into the cloud. Okay, great. Another one here is just on the object, it's really concerning object offload on-premise as opposed to in the cloud. So can you just talk about how that process works, uh, Mark? Sure, so uh, StoreSafe now supports uh, object storage in two different modes. Uh, on-prem in addition to pushing containers uh, off to the cloud and object storage on-prem. If you have an object storage uh, array, uh, we can push containers to that locally. So uh, if, as an example, if you don't trust the public cloud, you could do that on-prem. Uh, and we also support uh, our single instance repository storing its data on an object store. So uh, as an example, I'll, I'll pick on one of our partners here, Hitachi Vantera, uh, has object storage that, that you could um, have installed on-prem. Uh, if that is the case, uh, we could push containers to it, or we could use that uh, for our repository. And I would expect you would see a lower cost than using uh, a more expensive sand storage for that configuration. I'd like to point out too that uh, we uh, recommend against using uh, cloud account for our single instance repository, just because of the latency, uh, you would want to keep that uh, local for the best performance. Okay. And Abdul, question coming your way. Uh, the question is, can you install StoreSite on uh, two servers or multiple servers in a data center and, and cluster it? And that may also apply for when we're talking about store safe. So um, can you address clustering and how clustering works and our support for it? Yeah, sure. Uh, from a management standpoint, you would want to have one server, right? Uh, to, to, to be managing, but can you install two servers? Yeah, absolutely. You can still associate uh, your store guard or store safe servers to two different uh, uh, store site servers. Um, clustering is not supported at the moment. Uh, um, there are other ways for us to safeguard the, the, the uh, and, and, and the restoration of store site in case something happens, but uh, clustering at the moment is not, uh, is not support, supported. Okay. Gotcha. And, you know, Mark, one for you, which is concerning, you know, the IBM I, uh, user population. So can you just talk about support for, PPC 64, the IBM iPower architecture, and, and 
our current state and our plans for that? Sure. So uh, uh, we fully support IBMI environments, both as clients. I mentioned earlier in one of my responses that we support BRMS uh, streams um, backing up BRMS. Uh, we also support uh, configurations uh, running on top of a PowerPC uh, uh, Power 8 architecture, and we're in the process right now of qualifying the Power 9 architecture. So if you want to run our software on that hardware, uh, we will support uh, configurations like that also. Uh, many of our customers uh, do use us in uh, power architecture uh, configurations. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's, uh, it's it's been something we've supported for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got time for one more question. And the question is just about checksums and what we do in the cloud. So what, how, what, do, cl what do checksums do for us? What, is, what do they do for, for users? And um, what's the benefit of that? Uh, Mark. Sure. So uh, when, when we build a container uh, prior to uh, shipping it out of StoreSafe to the cloud, we add checksums uh, into that uh, container. So we have the what the original data, what the checksum uh, was for that. Uh, later on, uh, you can set up a policy through StoreSight uh, if you want to uh, recheck the checksums. Uh, so uh, as an example, perhaps once a quarter, you want to validate your archive. We will go through each of the containers. Uh, we would recalculate a fresh checksum, compare it against the one that's stored. Uh, in the container and from uh, from the store site screen, you can easily see that they're all green, that they've been checked. Uh, if one for some reason ends up not comparing, then you have an opportunity to uh, get an alert about that and go ahead and take action to uh, repair that. Um, but this is something you could set up on a regular basis, uh, quarterly, whatever your your interval that you would like to see for the checksum and uh, and be able to validate your archive. And I think we're one of the very few, if not the only vendor that gives you a way of validating uh, your archive data like that. Got it. All right. Well, thanks for all the great questions, folks. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot for your participation today. And I think that really is the, the next step is these products are available. It's time to move to uh, you know the next. And um, we know you're gonna have specific answers to get there. So please engage with us. And um, again, these are here that we think that uh, these are gonna provide a lot of value to you. And we're looking forward to uh, the next generation. So thanks again, everybody for participating and, um, and all your great questions. We're looking forward to engaging with you directly.